Okay. Um, so um, my presentation is. Um, it, it, I, I must say it uh, develops every day. So uh, the training sessions um, at FC Utrecht uh, are uh, prepared together uh, with the coaches and also evaluated together with the coaches. And then, of course, it every time uh, changes um, because uh, we, we get better insights from each other. Um, we came up with um, inspiring coaching, what means that uh, you're maybe not actually coaching, but you create a situation, sort of a chaos training, a football storm, um, what is inspirational for the players to, um, to execute. So um, I just want to start with um, two um, uh, drills, just to show uh, two examples. Okay, so um, uh, here you see um, uh, uh, here you see the pitch. So the pitch is uh, divided in in four uh, directions. It's always one team plays one way and the other team plays the other way. And um, after um, after a while, you can change the direction. If you see uh, the different uh, color of cones and uh, where the where the footballs are, the players can play on constantly, and the coach can just watch the behavior of the players. Um, and if you look at that, you see now the players are playing from the red to the green when the yellows. So that make he takes a decision to pass the ball, but the execution is not related to each other. So, and now they are four against three because that one player comes back misunderstanding be between each other so not really seeing and now it changes now you see they play from blue to yellow um, and then you see the behavior of the players and then this one recognizes so so the behavior of the players is um, uh, guided by uh, the, uh, the, the direction of the pitch. Uh, you see it's a um, uh, rectangle. So sometimes it's uh, short but wide and the other time it's uh, uh, tight but long. Um, on the other side, there is a, there is a sort of a, uh, a defensive or attacking zone where defenders cannot go in. So the defenders also have to show certain uh, scanning skills of how to press the ball, but also how to get uh, the depth out of it. Um, if we go to another one, then you can see sort of individual techniques. This is a same age group, but a bio group. So uh, late developers. Uh, it's, it are short, uh, short part so see he scans he looks what his options are a lot of pressure on the ball has to take a decision do i pass do i dribble left foot right foot and then the execution um so and you see the coach in this situation it's me i'm watching i'm 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 helping the players to recognize uh the game um so this Again, one time to to show you um, uh, to show you the example, and then you see. Okay, you can do that on different pitches. So we go now from this pitch to the other pitch. Um, you see, it's a little bit different, but the same with the uh, the areas behind it. They go in there. They have a one touch and a one touch finish. 
Okay, now look at the orange. So how are they scanning to defend those two goals? So they stay small, close together, tight. The yellows open up because they have to find spaces. Together now the orange is very tight, but they can't get pressure on the ball. The yellow still recognize, but now they lose the ball and they have to adapt. Okay, really good. Now orange has to adapt again. Okay, did I check? Oh, I lose the ball, run in behind, opposite run, and a one touch finish. So different, two different exercises, they switch from uh, exercise to exercise. And now you see the last one in the, uh, this is the same age group, also the under 14s, but now the early developers. And look at the behavior of this player. So he starts as a striker, gets the ball, tries to create situation. Okay, where is the space? Where is the space? Who, who wants to? Okay, you get a run, the opposite run on this side, and a one-touch finish. So, um, what I wanted to show you is that uh, for us, this is um, an example of an inspiring coaching session where players have to play the game uh, within different uh, challenges. They have to solve it themselves. They have to find out uh, solutions themselves um, and the information they get out of um, out of the game situation they use to um, yeah to make a contribution to uh, to the game with and without the ball in uh, attack in defense and also in the transition moments um, chaos training and football storm then of course uh, we have to understand that the football game is is uh, unpredictable. Uh, it's constantly changing and um, not one situation is exactly the same as, as the other one. Uh, every time there is something different. Uh, still, you hope the players to recognize what is needed to, uh, to make the right execution of that uh, football situation. Of course, at, at FC Utrecht, we work from uh, football DNA. And uh, we worked out some, some principles, and that is what I want to show is thank for, oh, this one goes up, this one comes later. Um, but this is an under 10 game situation, and then we go into a training situation. Uh, that is the training situation. First go back to this one. Um, so here is the build up, scanning the shoulder. Scanning. And forward running. So this is an example of uh, from from build up to attack. So the first principle is uh, playing forward whenever possible. But if you can't play forward, you have to uh, create other situations to play forward. So here we see that the player is checking his shoulder before getting the ball. Then again, checking, okay, he can't play forward. Now it's pressure on the ball. Still not. So first has to and a great run forward. Great decision of the striker to let the ball go. So if we if we look at the training situation and uh, we said, okay, it's a high intensity um, and at the same time, different uh, challenges within uh, uh, game-related stuff. So here you see a street football situation. Goalkeeper, so it's 3v1. And then you go 1v1 in the middle, play forward if possible and finish. Now the other way. So there are three different parts of the pitch. Look forward, play forward, run forward, pass forward, and try to finish. So now you saw that not every situation starts with a uh, with a two v one from 
from the goalkeeper. So a 3v1 with the goalkeeper, but sometimes if the opportunity is there, the first pass forward is, is there. So that is, that's a very important point of the DNA of FC Utrecht. So look forward, play forward, shortest way to the goal, but not just to a player who is uh, defended by three uh, defenders. So recognize those situations and scan it. If we go to the older age groups, so we go into the under 17s, just a short part. So it's a sort of a 3v1 here. One passer, receiver, set, make run in behind. Okay, and if we go to the training situation of the under 17s, then so play the ball in. So it's three against two, no bips. So they have to look where the teammates are and there's pressure from behind. So again, you see this player starts running around that goal and, and makes a 3v3 situation. So two defenders against three strikers. It's just too late, but you saw that the players had to be aware of it. The defenders, when they regain ball position, they can score in this little goal. So there's always directional. So there is a real translation to the uh, game uh, 11 aside on a Saturday. This is another example, but then with goalkeepers. So a 3v2 situation towards a goal and a finish. And then it starts from the other side, set to the striker, working together, goalkeeper to defenders, scanning constantly, looking for the right solution. Okay, so, so these are examples. Uh, here you see the explanation of the chaos training in a football storm. So always game related, high intensity and diversity with rules, with bips, no bips, goalkeepers, scoring opportunities, areas that you have to play through. Um, uh, always get detailed information and awareness of the whole area. Quick visual awareness of the area. Uh, change your focus quickly from detailed information to generals. Uh, uh, information. Um, you can quickly stop or change when you already started an execution to a better execution. Uh, you saw that uh, uh, with that player who wanted to play forward but first played wide and that player could play forward. So that, that was a really good decision not playing forward at that moment because the defenders were in a good situation. Um, constantly uh, find new solutions for challenges or problems and use new and old information next to each other. So these are the ingredients of uh, every training session. Um, and within that training sessions, the players have to uh, develop their uh, decision making and uh, their technical and physical and uh, uh, personality uh, skills to, uh, to make the right execution. Um, related to uh, the club DNA, and uh, this is this is exactly um, uh, the way I like I like to challenge also the coaches at FC Utrecht. Okay, think about it, think out of the box, and um, uh, try not to use predictable situations. Uh, let it let it go wrong, and uh, because. It's never wrong because at that moment, the player starts to read that situation and think, oh, wait a minute, next time I have to, yeah, to execute uh, in another situation, otherwise I cannot be successful. And um, 
uh, that for me is especially important when you want to know more about those individual uh, players. I, I would like to show, to show um, a video of um, an under 12 player. And he is, uh, he is uh, late, late mature. Just um, look at this, this player in the middle with the green shirt. And he's a late mature. He just focus on his head movement constantly. And so and and here the coach asks, could you could you play forward, Scott? Because that's his name. Uh, he's, he's the neutral player, so he's constantly in ball possession. But look what happens now. So he, that's an early mature. It was the, blue, the big one in the middle. So he has to survive in this game. So he, he even has to scan more. Constantly check, check. And create his own space. Until now he touched the ball one time. Okay, still not right, still not right. Still looking for what's happening. Okay, what's the situation on the other side? Okay, okay. And now he, he, add, he contributes to the game and he supports. And, and almost scores a goal here. So this I just wanted to show in, 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 uh, in terms of how can you feed back give feedback to individual players. I was coaching this player individually, that training session. I was not involved in the whole training session, but just that individual player. Um, and especially in talent identification, I know that uh, the Bruyne was in the same situation. He was also that small when he was under 12, under 13. And not everybody recognized uh, his, his talent. So we have to be very aware in, in um, uh, taking decisions of early mature or late mature, but look at their football actions. Um, and if we, if we go to the different age groups where, um, where we spoke about, then we have here the under age, and you see the, the, the white and the red cones in the back. So he has sco scored in the white gate. Yeah. So and he... When you regain ball possession, you can score in the little goals. Also the white and the red. So look, with a red cone. So he should score in the red. And he scores. But, see the coach? Oh, look at this. Oh, sorry coach. Yeah, I didn't recognize. And then you have trans transition and scoring the other goal. So again, a sort of a chaos um, example. What we'll goes straight into, into the under nines. And now it really... And thank you for all the coaches that they are so open to... Uh, to let me show this. So constantly when there is an option free, and you see that blue line in the middle, when you pass that, you also can go back to the side where you came from, see? Look around you, look around you. Where is the free space? Where can I score? So, asking many questions, giving the example, 20 seconds coaching and go on because you lose the concentration of those players. Uh, the last one I want to show in this one is the under-11s. 
So it's three times 1v1 on two big goals with goalkeepers. And now it's 2v2 there. This player is very clever because he thinks, okay, my teammates are still playing there and now it becomes 3v3. And then he decides, okay, I have to make the dribble, pass to one side, support on the other side and a goal. So it went from 1v1 into 2v2 and 2v1 with the goalkeeper into 3v3 plus two goalkeepers. Um, so, yeah, that is what I wanted to, uh, to add in terms of uh, how our coaches try to implement that um, um, not predictable situations, every time changing, but also give the examples of, okay, look around you, where is the space, where are your teammates, where can you, where can you score, where can you be free, how can you press? Uh, not telling, but just asking. 